Hello loves, welcome back to Theta Daytona. Today we are going to do the astro breakdown of the full moon in Cancer that's coming up um, on the 30th of December. And so um, I wanted to, I'm sorry I didn't get this video up for you guys a little bit earlier. It was the holiday season, well still is the holiday season. So yeah, everything's been a little bit crazy, but I did want to get it out for you guys before it started as it is the last um, full moon of the year. So that way you guys can make it extra special for you guys um, and have like a good ritual, a good, you know, day, a good vibe for the most part. Um, before we start breaking down um, all the aspects and everything, I just wanted to wish everybody a good holiday season. I know it can be a very tough time for people, and especially this year, I feel like it's a little crazy. Um, and it can be, you know, a lot of different things. A lot of people don't like Christmas, don't like the holidays, don't like, you know, any of the holidays. Um, happy Kwanzaa, because I know it started yesterday. Haha. -ha. Um, so I hope everybody's enjoying whatever they celebrate. Mm, sorry, <laughs> whatever they celebrate. Um, and I hope that, you know, you guys are at least working with the energy as best as you can during these times. I know it's been a little bit crazy, but I hope that you guys are making the best of it and having a good holiday season. Um, and I wish all of you the best and success and abundance and love and prosperity moving on to 2021 <laughs> um so let's get started we're gonna break down as always we're gonna talk about where the planets are um situated first and then we're gonna get into the aspect so the sun is in capricorn moon is in um cancer mercury is in capricorn venus is in sag mars is in aries jupiter and saturn are in aquarius um uranus is in taurus in retrograde neptune is in um pisces and pluto is in capricorn okay so let's get into the aspects because listen okay so the first one right off the bat the sun is opposing the moon okay it's the sun and this is in a strong opposition to the moon for this specific full moon in, in cancer and this is not necessarily like the best placement um to be quite honest and the reason why i don't really like this aspect for this particular moon is because um, of the dynamics of the two, Capricorn is a very masculine-esque um, sign. It's a very paternal sign because Saturn is known as the father of the zodiac astrology signs. Um, and so because Saturn has a reputation of being the father planet, Cancer has a reputation of being the mother planet um, or where the mother sign, the moon, is seen as a divine feminine sign while Saturn is seen as a divine masculine energy. And so when you have this sun opposing moon, you have this these two different areas of ourselves opposing each other. You have the divine feminine and the divine masculine kind of like Eh, not meeting in the middle and one being kind of pushing over over the other in a way and so because this is a full moon in cancer and obviously we're focusing on the fact that it's a full moon in cancer you do have this capricorn energy kind of harshing things out and trying to be a little bit more realistic or trying to just um you know stay within the ego aspect of the season versus actually looking at things on an emotional level or connecting or tapping into it in an emotional way so there is kind of like this disconnect here that can cause conflicts because we're more aligned to move from our ego which is that sun in capricorn than to move through emotion during this time especially because the sun is also in a conjunction with mercury so it's being supported by our minds during this time and um when the mo i personally like it when the moon and mercury are in a really good alignment because that gives you um an alignment of understanding the emotional component with the mind uh, um the way that i, I i'm gonna explain this to you guys is like the example I'm going to use is books. When you think of books, there's different types of books, okay? Um, there's factual books, there's historical books, there's, there's you know, textbooks, there's books that are taught in school. But then there's also books that are stories, books that are um, climactic, books that trigger your emotion, trigger your feeling, trigger your body, um, trigger you visually, trigger you to feel certain things. And that's it to me, that's the difference between the way like the sun connects to mercury versus the way the sun connects to the moon and when mercury is not necessarily in alignment with the moon in a, in a really good way um and the reason why i say this is because you have this kind of energy where 
the sun is in is in conjunction with mercury where it's just like in conjunction with the mind so how you're thinking how you're communicating you think you're talking the truth and saying what needs to be said and all this stuff but then you're forgetting the emotional component you're going by facts versus the emotions as well it needs to be a happy marriage versus it just being you like going off like especially with the way the planets are set up for this particular full moon it can be mars is popping off for this particular full moon so you don't want to just start dropping bombs with your mind because the mind can be a very um tricky place it can be very it can easily forget emotion and go straight into facts and the second you start spitting facts even if you're triggering yourself to spit those facts from emotion you can easily hurt someone just by being like well well it's not my fault that you're cheated on you and all this stuff yeah you're spitting facts but you're just for you just forgot on how you're bringing up this whole emotional situation for this person so there's this disconnect between the mind and the emotion for this particular full moon and it's really really irritating to me personally um to see because you have the sun supporting mercury 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 in in this you have the sun being in alignment with mercury where your head and your ego are like in the same spot you're like feeling very much like nope this is me this is exactly what i need to say this is exactly what you're gonna hear like but then you're forgetting the emotional aspect the emotional component so there is a lot of things that can be said and done during this specific full moon that can be very triggering to some people especially emotionally if you happen to be a mutable sign or very sensitive that can you know not necessarily be the best to hear like no some people might not want to hear what you got to say um and especially because again there is this kind of like pushing away emotion and trying to stay in a consciousness on a mental consciousness um rather and so it, it can be I, I personally feel like this with the way the rest of the planets are set up is a recipe for damn disaster is how i'm seeing it um so you also have the sun trying um uranus for this specific full moon um which personally i feel like this is good for evolution of your um evolution of the ego in many ways but also ev an evolution of what needs to happen with you independently and what especially moving forward looking at your goals looking at who you are looking at your personality also tapping into your higher self and your goals and purpose of your higher self what you're meant to do in this life stuff like that i feel like this is a really good trying for that um really good trying to uh get down to what it is that you want to do especially if you're trying to be a healer or a teacher or you know um someone who coaches or anything like that who's just uh wants to com contribute to others growth as well um i feel like this specific trine is really good for to have in alignment with uranus as far as the soul's evolution and what it is that you're doing um in this life to better yourself better others contribute to society contribute to the people what you bring what what are you what are you what is the value that you're bringing um because don't forget uranus is still in um taurus taurus being the sign of value the sign of that that the pleasure within the value of things um and how we achieve and succeed in that um the moon is in a strong opposition with mercury um and this gives it so you know this brings some issues to the mind in many ways. You might forget things that you have said before, especially if you're trying to bring things out of as fact. As, but I told you guys I don't like don't like it with the, the the moon is opposing Mercury because I like them both. They're like a happy marriage for me. Like when they're in a good spot, they're in a happy happy marriage. You want to have a good emotional connections with your mind because that gives you clarity it brings you stability on a spiritual level so having this opposition here is not necessarily i don't i personally don't like it um it can be a very tough time for uh people communicating especially on a social level so i would kind of steer away from connecting with other people during for this specific moon i i don't really think that we should be connecting with others i say this knowing that i gotta go see my sister for her birthday is on this day <laughs> um but i just have to be mindful of how I'm communicating obviously but it there is just like this this kind of dismissing the emotions and just talking straight facts so even if they your facts are based on actual like this happened da, 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 if you forget that this other person might take what you're saying in a certain way because of how you're communicating it you're gonna get into some trouble because that's when you know stuff is gonna pop off so there is this kind of need to understand um how your emotions are 
kind of battling your mind a little bit and battling others' minds and how if they're put in a place where they need to communicate, they might not necessarily communicate in the best way because the emotions are getting discarded. They're getting it's kind of like getting put in the back burner over what needs to be spoken. And so the mind will get put off put out first. And so there is there it's just kind of like this the beef there's beef between the emotions and the, and the feelings um right now or the emotions in the mind right now so be very mindful of what you say before you say it and how you're connecting with others and even if you want to connect with others on this day to be honest i would just kind of steer away from doing it honestly six feet <laughs> um so um the next one that we're going to talk about is venus squared neptune um this one specifically because venus is in sag and neptune is in pisces they're both, both mutable signs this kind of aspect leaves for some angst to be had i do think that because sag is such an adventurous sign and it's been cooped up for a while there is just kind of need to kind of go out and do something experience something um for some who you know might just be like staying home or just doing something low-key i recommend watching some movies like if you're if you've been like you know dying to go to like i don't know france paris or something watch a movie or a show that's like set in that time period or something like that like allow yourself to kind of escape use piscean energy which is art form any art form whether music or whatever to escape your reality for a little bit because if you're not really able to do so in a physical sense which sag would love to experience and do it you might as well do so through our form um on a spiritual note this is a really good time this would be a really good placement to kind of do something a little bit more exaggerated for your ritual work i say exaggerated as like it's not necessarily necessary for you to do something overly exaggerated i'm just saying if you wanted to do like a visualistic um ritual where you actually go into like the forest or you you know go into like a space of land that you just really connect to and want to co commune with the nature spirits or you know call in your ancestors and have a whole entire like ritual set up for that um this would also be a good aspect to do so with and you know just because it takes you out of into a different element um this this is a full moon in cancer so it's great to work with the water element for this um so by all means you know you use the energy as you should but i i'm just letting you know right now it, it can be a little bit frustrating frustrating to navigate this energy when venus isn't sag because sag just wants to do what it wants to do so there is this kind of like liberate me i want to be free from this but you're gonna have to work with the energy to the best that you can so if if at the bare minimum what you can do is make your rituals more elaborate beautiful and you know have like a moment almost like if you're watching a movie or something like that and have like a moment with nature in a very you know real ritualistic way or you can dive into the things that you love that are the other piscean energy whether you, you're you're working with dream work and stuff like that um whether you're you want to astral travel that's also a really good thing to do with this specific aspect itself because sag wants to be liberated somehow so try to work with these two energies to the best of your ability is what i would say um mars is also squaring all the generational planets honey let me tell you mars is squaring jupiter mars is squaring saturn mars is squaring pluto mars is popping off i'm telling you i would not be communing with others during this time i would not be you know trying to socialize try no 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 i would not the only reason i'm seeing my sister on this day is because it's her birthday i cannot avoid it <laughs> i cannot avoid it um but i would not be doing this during this time because mars is very agitated um do not forget that mars is in aries and chiron is still in aries there's a lot of like inner agitations that are coming up and still very deep rooted in like our our you know our past um our wound spaces and stuff like that and mars is really popping off of the generational planets and i feel like there's this angst there's this one needing to fight needing to get mad you know tired of stuff like really especially and i feel like on a social level with everything that's happening um in the united states with the stimulus and everything like a lot of people just a lot of people are exhausted um and waiting these what what is it 20 20 something days 23 days that we're waiting for you know this dude to like be gone um there's still a lot of stuff happening so on a social level where people are like getting really really agitated and i do feel like this can lead to like protesting and stuff like that because there's just like this you know the old generation you guys been doing this to us for so long like, uh, that kind of pent-up energy like with mars just wanting to fight trust me it can create a lot of different chaos so you want to just make sure you're kind of staying away from other people um or 
you know, letting out your frustrations in a productive way, whether it's just like calling your Congress person and, you know, doing the best that you can do with that. But it definitely creates a lot of, you know, friction where it's just like fighting time, fight like using your your passion and whatever you're passionate about and letting that that fuel your actions in a way that it's impacting us on a generational level. And I do feel like generations wise, we're all feeling this energy. I think I think there's been a lot of tension with between the generations. Um, and yeah, there's just definitely a lot going on. And I feel like the, for, at most be very mindful because Mars um, square and Jupiter specifically Jupiter is the planet of expansion. And um, you don't it can also expand negative like negative things as much as positive things. So this could really quickly turn into a huge march a huge something um a huge moment where it's just like everybody's popping off everybody's saying what they need to say and you about to hear my frustration you about to hear my pain you about to hear why i'm pissed off like it's a very aggressive energy um so be very mindful of how you navigate and use that um the good thing is that you can put this in spell work if you're frustrated about something Put that in your spell work. Let it go. Especially again, because I'm telling you guys, you should be working with the water element for this. Um, because it's a full moon in Cancer. It's a water element. Uh, so you want to make sure that you're using your emotions and using your that water element to purify yourself, to cleanse yourself, to pour all any of those frustrations into your spell work. So that way you can release them um, productively at the same time um jupiter is also in a conjunction with saturn jupiter is in a square with uranus and saturn is in a square with uranus um obviously jupiter and saturn is, are going to be in a conjunction because they're both in aquarius so they are supporting each other um and as i will tell you for through 2021 they will be supporting each other obviously the same way that jupiter was supporting saturn this year in 2020 because they were both in capricorn so they did you know jupiter what what, what happens with this conjunction is i really it jupiter holds saturn's hand the whole time and because saturn tends to move a lot slower um through the sign and the impact is felt over a larger amount of time when jupiter is in conjunction with saturn especially for a good long amount of time the the, the the speed of in which Saturn moves is quicker it's intensified it's expanded because that's what Jupiter does um so you do you will see especially now that it's uh, that they're both in Aquarius and Aquarius happens to be um sorry Luna's biting my arm <laughs> Aquarius happens to be um an air sign things happen a little bit faster they're more mental they're more liberating um so definitely be mindful of how, you know, you're using the energy as well, because things, you know, it's a it's a quicker pace. It's not the same thing as, a, as them both being in Capricorn, um, even though 2020, as you saw, both being in Capricorn was crazy and everything happened so quickly. It's kind of in that, but it's an air sign. So it's definitely something that to be um aware of for this specific conjunction because you'd still have to have this specific awareness um throughout the year okay now jupiter squaring uranus and saturn um squaring uranus um listen at the end of the day the whole point is this upgrade and i do feel like there's this social upgrade happening um with the generational planets triggering the each other the way they, they are i do think that it's not for a not not for anything bad i do feel like it's needed i feel like it's something that they 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 need to have this friction so that it can be resolved um not all the time the plan i don't think i don't believe that all the time the planets need to be supporting each other and stuff like that because that doesn't create change it doesn't create moments where we're we're actively reevaluating and then making decisions that are good for us and and creating change in the world um and within ourselves so th it is a good thing that they're squaring each other but understand that these are generational planets and so it's felt on a generational level it's not just one person feeling something it is all of us feeling a lot of things at once so make sure that you are aware of the energies aware of the tension you can cut the tension with a knife but it's there is very present and it's something that is all about self self evolution especially with the saturn um, squaring uranus it's all about generational evolution how we are evolving on a generational level how we are growing how we are um allowing ourselves to be our best selves how our, how we're setting up ourselves for success on a generational level if you look at the united states versus all of the other countries especially with its um 
uh, with, with the way we've been handling the coronavirus, we've been really, really bad at it. And when you have the country being in a bad spot, that doesn't benefit anybody in the country, including rich people. Okay, including people who are who have businesses and you know made it make a lot of money and stuff like that. If you don't have anybody buying your stuff or buying your 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 products in your in your business, even Jeff Bezos, if everybody stopped buying from Amazon, you think he's still gonna have money? Like it just goes away. You need to have it. There's a collective support. There's a social support that needs to happen. And so we're going through this upgrade on a social level. So I will say I will say that. I definitely see in the chart that there will be some resolutions happening, especially with Mars. Oh my God, Mars um, squaring Jupiter as well. I definitely see some resolutions happening within everything with the stimulus and unemployment and stuff like that because a yearly budget for the country has to be passed um, and they haven't passed it yet. So it's either we're going into a government shutdown, which can't happen, obviously, or you know they pass a bill so there's stuff that will be resolved but there's a lot of tension and there has to be in order for the for change to happen so i want you guys to understand that is a necessary evil <laughs> for us to see any you know relief from it so that's what i'm seeing for the chart itself um so let's look at the cards that i pulled out so we can talk about them so the first one the first i'm gonna well the obviously the deck that I was going to use for this because it's the holiday season was the Nightmare Before Christmas Tarot. Um, so that's why I pulled three cards for us. And actually, wait, I did it wrong. It's this way. Sorry. It's the other way. <laughs> it came out like this. I just mixed them up. Okay, so the first card that came up was the Three of Needles, which is the Three of Swords um, in this deck. Then the Knight of Candles, which is the Knight of um, wants in this deck and then sometimes i gotta like i gotta like translate the card in my head i'm like wait it's the knight of this <laughs> um and then the seven of presents which is the seven of pentacles in this deck and um when i saw this right off the bat what i got from it it's, it's just that understanding of cancer energy and like now that we're at the end of the year um really really reevaluating re where we're at because again i feel like capricorn energy um is very much a reflective season it is a very much a it can be a very deep and dark season for some and especially through mental health because a lot of people look down on themselves during this time a lot of people look back and say oh my god you wasted so much time on this you could have done this oh man like i, I wish i would have gotten this or i wish i could have taken a shot with that i wish i would have told this person how i felt like all of these kind of things we can be very very harsh on how we spent our time why because saturn rules time and Capricorn has that connection with time because of Saturn. And so we, because we are very time focused, we're a very time focused sign. We are all about understanding and how we're using our time to better ourselves. Um, and even though we can be very, you know, about our growth in the, in the physical realm sense, what I want you to guys to see it as, especially when we're talking about the um, understanding the energy of the time when a Capricorn makes a goal, and we always, you know, use the, 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 uh, uh, what's it called? The example of a mountain. We're climbing a mountain because we're goats. <laughs> we're mountain goats. We're always climbing a mountain. We're climbing up to the top. We're, you know, we set a goal and you, the, the goal is at the top of that mountain. When we reach the top of the mountain, we're there to enjoy the view, okay? As much as Capricorns can be very stern, very focused, very, you know, we have a certain pers persona and ideas that people put on us. When we get up to the top and we see that view, see where we got, see where we put ourselves, we feel joy. There's happiness there. There's success there. There's 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 that vibration of success and happiness and gratitude. And and this is one of the reasons why Capricorns also don't really often, uh, many Capricorns don't believe in astrology or any type of spiritual anything because they believe that they, all cardinal signs actually, they believe that they put themselves up they build themselves up nobody else helps them they told themselves they push themselves they made the choices they set intention for success and to grow and to achieve that thing so when they actually achieve it they we feel so amazing and it's it's something that emotionally satisfies us even though a lot of people don't think that think we're just soulless people that just want to have money and work all the time it's not that it's just that our goals lead to emotional satisfaction, same, which is the same lesson that Saturn ultimately, ultimately tries to teach us in the long run, is that our goals and, and us being set up for success is for our own benefit, for our own satisfaction. This is why everybody's Saturn return, everybody always complains about Saturn's return, and I'm just like, 
bro okay you're on your last year of the Saturn return uh are you better off today than you were three years ago are you in a better spot like is everything that you lost and everything that you gained for your own benefit and success and the answer is always 1000 percent yes i am in a brave weather pace now okay then why you mad though what i just want to know what you mad because like that was the whole point of the whole thing um so this is what this is what the focus is right now okay and with this full moon in cancer this is really about self-nourishment and understanding that we need to pull out these three swords out from our own bodies and this is exactly why i did um the workshop for this month was what it was end of the year wrap up wrap up and we did the meditation um to be energetically released for each month of 2020 it's going to be up until the end of the year to begin the beginning of um 2021 i'm going to leave it up for you guys um and then it's just going to be in uh for the patreon so they'll have access to it if you want to access it through there um you can access it through the patreon but for now i'll leave it up for you guys so you guys can go ahead and do that meditation and get that healing that you need release what you need to release from 2020 that you do not need to bring into 2021 because this is just not it's not worth it it's not needed it's just not it it ain't it um and then refocus the fire because again there's a lot of things pent up here there's been a lot of things pent up for a while and i think there are there's a lot of frustration mars is being very aggressive and wanting change and wanting resolutions and wanting to direct his passion to something and i feel like it's easy to get mad during this time and pop off when you're really frustrated about something completely different so it's all about really understanding our intentions moving forward this is a time for planning our resolutions planning our goals um very, again capricorn-esque energy and so we can't move forward holding on to baggage from the past it's just not gonna work um and because cancer energy and you guys know i say this a lot can be very all about those micro traumas that we hold on to we're still holding on to the light little one thing that somebody did to us for like a like february of this year when so much other stuff had passed like let it go it is time to release and i actually came up especially if you're in the in the trying to manifest and trying to focus on the future it's time to release and that actually came up um in our oracle cards so archangel Raphael says easy does it okay to archangel Raphael, please help me detach retreat and let go so that healing can occur y'all think i'll be making this stuff up and forgiveness heals Dear God and Archangel Raphael, I am willing to forgive myself and others in exchange for what I really want, peace and health, okay? Your own peace, your own health, your own success, your own growth at the end of the day. Um, we also have magnify your intentions and open your heart, okay? Magnify your intentions and open your heart. And I'm not surprised to see either of these on here because I feel like ultimately... There is kind of this need, again, especially where, where Venus is, there's just like this need for us to kind of open up to the things that we love to do, dive into more of what we love to do and try to direct our passion, direct it somewhere because Mars, again, is popping off <laughs> during this full moon. Um, and when we have magnify your intentions is really, again, if you don't understand how to... Um, if you don't understand how to direct again with the seven of pentacles how to how to direct your intentions what you're going to end up doing is wasting them and you're going to just end up popping off and using up all of your energy on an argument or, get, or just getting mad at the littlest things or just getting frustrated um this this specific listen this full moon i can see some protesting happen i can see a whole bunch of stuff happen on a social level um just because of the, the energy is so tense, you can cut it with a knife. But on a personal level, you can do more for yourself. And ultimately, it's all about setting yourself up for success for the next year. And this is where that seven of pentacles is coming up. What do you want to see for yourself? What do you want to plant? What do you want to grow in your garden? You guys know I use that as an analogy all the time. So what is it? What do you want to grow in your garden? That is the question. Anyway, so thank you loves for... Um, watching this video um i just want to take a moment to thank all the new subscribers um and wish everybody a happy holiday season uh do not forget to subscribe don't forget to check out um the patreon it will be down in the link below we're always learning and growing over there uh, there's going to be another workshop posted for the next month um coming up soon i'm working on editing a bruja vlog for you guys literally still working uh so stay tuned for everything i will see you loves in the next one have a beautiful day